I love water. It flows from the tap and then you mix some pigment and you put it on a paper and it is able to turn out to be a beautiful, become a beautiful painting. It's pure magic. Art in the making. A podcast about the making process.
I love water. It flows from the tap and then you mix some pigment and you put it on a paper and it is able to turn out to be a beautiful, become a beautiful painting. It's pure magic. And to look at, it's magical as well. Um, here it needs some life, so I will add a few ducks maybe in this water later. First I have to try to paint them because I'm not able not, not used to paint ducks but let's talk about the water um, I've been very afraid of water I had a bad teacher at uh, school he wasn't able to teach me swimming he had to but the first lesson he just threw me into the water because he saw that I was scared and uh, I came out of the water crying and uh, 
Then he asked, didn't you like it? No, no, I didn't like it. Oh, well, let's try it again. And he threw me over again in the water for six or seven times. And then I lied and I told him, cried, crying, but I told him that I really liked it to be thrown in, in the water. And then he said, okay, now you're not scared anymore. The faith into this man had disappeared from the first lesson, of course, and he wasn't able to teach me swimming that whole year. Um, I've been trying to teach myself swimming later at high school. My father used to be a, a, a music teacher over there, and my brother and I got a key in summertime, uh, the key for the swimming pool. And those early summer nights, uh, I went to this pool on my bicycle and I was able to be there alone because everyone was watching TV or playing football and I was alone in the swimming pool and tried to teach swimming myself and that went very well. So I can swim, uh, I love water but I'm not very easy going in the water. So I prefer looking into the water and um, let's do this in this painting that I painted a few weeks ago, this rhythm, this natural rhythm that you find on the water is that rhythm that you got without wind. So those days with, without wind and, and a clear sky for me are the best days to paint water. That movement over here, it's a repeating movement, so that's why I call it a rhythm. It repeats and repeats itself. So you have to follow this rhythm, this movement with your brush. And it goes on and it goes on and becomes smaller, smaller, smaller. So you have to take care that you paint the same rhythm in the distance, but smaller maybe with a smaller brush as well. That's maybe the only way to show that this water is actually a, a flat surface. It's nothing else than a moving mirror and you create depth in it by larger movements lower nearby and smaller, the same movement smaller in the distance. The painting that I've been making this week, it's a cityscape of Amsterdam. Here we see the Prinsengracht, the canal is called Prinsengracht, the corner, on the corner with the, the, the Reguliersgracht. It's a fairy tale corner. It's uh, maybe even too nice to paint. I'm not sure. but uh, Well, I like it. I like it because of the light on that white building on the corner. I was there uh, a few days, one or two years ago, for two house portraits. No, it was a house portrait over there and I was asked to paint a boat over here. People are living in boats here in the kennel. And for that boat I needed a higher spot. and. Um, a client of mine in Amsterdam, he asked uh, the people from the church, the, the Amstel church, the Amstelkerk, and he asked if I was able to, to climb the roof. And they let me do it. I've been just walking around on that roof of the church for, for several hours to wait for the perfect light. And I made several pictures from there and then later I, I made a walk through this part of the the center of town and I shoot several pictures to, to paint later in the studio. And this is one of them. There was no wind, as you see, so the water became totally flat. Um, that's a bit risky because um, you must maybe show a little movement in the water, just to show that it is water. So I, I showed some movement in the branches and in this sharp corner over here, that edge of that house. And when this reflection was painted, I let it dry and you saw me put a very, very wet wash of a messy color over it, very transparent. Uh, you have to do that because when this reflection is as clear as the, the, the real houses, there is, there, there's, there, it's not the right, right balance actually. So you need to make it a, a, a quite weaker to show that it is water. The color I used was a messy color 
actually I try to mix the color that you will see when you use the water itself out of the kennel. It's quite messy water of course, maybe a bit yellow, greenish, grayish color, very transparent. So I try to mix a color that we see when we use the water for our watercolor out of the kennel and I put that very wet over this reflection and I let it dry to see what happened. I'm so happy with this, yeah we call it in, in the Netherlands granulation of the paint due to the ultramarine blue. Those pigments ultramarine, ultramarine they, they are looking for each other while the paint is drying and then they decide to stay together like, like little balls and then you get this beautiful surface with a yeah, granulation. It's, it's really very useful for a wall like this just to make it less hard and flat. These are those kinds of requests I uh, do for clients who I've just visited and then we do a walk around their house and we can conclude that it's really a nice house to live in but worse to paint. And most of the times we find another subject, a suitable subject for another painting and these clients live in a house with a huge garden and at the end of winter time, beginning of spring, when you are, are on a higher level of their home, you see this monastery in the distance at the end of the morning as a silhouette. And I thought this 
could be a nice painting. So I tried to make a sketch, a composition for it today. Maybe it's impossible to sketch, it's better to paint. But you must make a sketch to show what kind of composition you would like. And I like this composition, this, this uh, standing long size. But you need to work out all those branches and all those bushes and it takes a lot of time and you don't take that time for a sketch. But hopefully they will understand what I would like to do. We will have a phone call about it and maybe from next week I can start with this painting. We will see. Well, let's take the opportunity to thank you again. Uh, to thank you for, for all those comments and emails that I read. They reach me very well, but I'm not able to answer all of them. I must say, it's really an honor to uh, read your kind of diaries about your experiences in creating. I mean, these videos that, that take a lot of time to make, but for me it's, it's helpful as well. to I see, I see these videos as my diary, and I share them with you, and then... Yeah, I think it's really an honor to me to, to read that you understand what I'm doing, what I'm talking about, and then you'll even share your thoughts as well. And some of these thoughts, um, that, that just must be answered. Well, your questions, that must be answered, but it takes really uh, time to do this. And I don't want to do this on, as, as a comment under your comments. So, set for a while and I really wanted to say more about those questions that you asked me about finding your way to keep on working with a strong focus while you are distracted by discouraging thoughts for example. For me this question is so clear. I mean I really know what thoughts can do and from the moment we feel identified with these useless thoughts, there is anxiety, there is fear. And this is very bad. So this has become the next member section video. You will find it already in the member section. And it's a longer video where I speak about uh, thoughts versus creativity. I mean, while we are in this process, which is going actually on by itself. We don't need any thought. So the good thing is when you don't need any thought, it really doesn't matter if your thoughts are discouraging or encouraging, you don't need them. That's my experience every day. What I meant to say is that it's maybe only about finding your way and you don't find this way, you don't find this path by thoughts, you only find it by activity. I mean, you find it by, by uh, feeling, intuition, knowing, not by thoughts. I try to explain that it's more about a certain behavior we develop, not only while we are at work, but also when we are in our daily life, busy with other things. And this is, is the way, I think. And um, I tell you in this video as well what keeps me at work every day. So check out that video in the member section. It's another playlist. I will share the video in the description. and. Well, I'll see you next week and uh, enjoy the weekend.